In today's video, we'll be taking a look at the Flash Forge Creator 3 Pro and giving my thoughts and opinions on it. So while you're watching me unbox the printer, let's go ahead and go through the specs. So starting off, this is the IDEX printer. It does have independent dual extruders. It does have a printing precision of 0.2 millimeters, a build volume of 300 by 250 by 200 millimeters, as print speeds of 10 to 150 millimeters per second. It does have a maximum nozzle temperature of 320 degrees Celsius and a maximum build plate temperature of 120 degrees Celsius. To connect to the printer, you can use USB, Wi-Fi, or Ethernet. It does have auxiliary leveling, and it does have a filament runout sensor. The printer does have a camera, a flexible build plate, and carbon air filters. So everything included with the printer are two 1 kilogram rolls of PLA, one scraper, one USB stick, extra PTF tubing, a unclogging pin tool, a stamping wrench, a screwdriver, two Allen keys, and some grease for the linear rods, a glue stick, a user guide, the quick start guide, and the after sales card. I did just want to mention that the slicing program we'll be using today will be Flash Print version 5. Right here are these yellow clips that hold the linear rods. You want to make sure you take those out before you power on the printer. There are two clips. You want to make sure you take both of the clips out. So right around here, I did notice that the red extruder assembly was not moving correctly. It would move maybe an inch or two, and then it would just stop, like there wasn't enough power going to it. So after checking the user guide and making sure I did everything correctly, I did go ahead and I did swap the wiring harness from the left side, connecting to the right, and vice versa. And the right side did start to move, and then the left side started having problems. So after doing that, I could tell something was wrong with the wiring harness, so I did go ahead and flip the printer over and open up the bottom to check out the board. So after removing the bottom plate, you guys can look at the wires and you can see that the blue wire wasn't pushed all the way into the connecting port, which is giving a bad connection and causing the stepper motor not to move properly.
After getting that wire clipped in all the way, as you guys see, the printer starts to move properly now. I'm not sure how the wire got loose, maybe from shipping or from factory just wasn't pushed in all the way. Nonetheless, we got it fixed and now let's go ahead and do the auto level and insert the filament and get our test prints done. Here's the interior of the printer. So right here on the left side we do have the extruder and filament holder. And the same thing on the right side. We do have two filter fans and then we do have two exhaust fans. Here we do have the build play. Now this is just a flexible build play. It is not PEI or PP. It is just some sort of plastic coating on top. Now it does work fairly good if you just use some glue stick. Here's the compartment where the filament is being kept. Now I do like how there's a door design and everything is kept inside of the frame of the printer. Now you could just throw some desk kit in there just to keep everything dry. And the same thing goes for the other side. The user interface is really well made and it's easy to navigate. The bed leveling process was really easy and the printer does a great job of explaining what to do. Now this was assisted auto leveling, so what the printer would do is it would probe a spot on the bed, it would tell you how many degrees you need to turn the knob, it would reprobe, make sure you do everything correctly, and then probe the next station. So as you guys seen, I did have a duplicate print going and now you don't see it anymore because it did fail. So I went ahead and I did turn off the filament feeding to the right side. So now we just have the left side finishing. So starting off with our first model right here, we do have the sword. It was printed pretty nicely. As you see in the back, we do have this pretty obvious C seam. But other than that, it does work really nicely and it printed the tolerances perfectly. There's a bit of this right here, I'm not sure what that is, but it printed really well. And there was just a little cleanup needed at the top, just with the knife, because I believe they had ironing on in the settings, and which caused the top layer right here to just fuse up a little bit. Right here we do have this little test print they provided. Now this was, I guess, a duct for something, but it did print pretty well. Everything looks good on it, the layer lines and everything. So right here we have these dual color prints. They turned out really well. Everything was printed how it should have been. And just a little bit of stringing on the inside and a bit on the outside. But it turned out really well. Now the domino turned out really good too. There were some imperfections though. This was the front, the top, the back, and the bottom. But when you look on the sides, you do have some imperfections right here. And on the other side, that's where the nozzles were going on and off the print. There was no prime tower used, so maybe that's why this happened. But other than that, it was a really nice and clean print. So right here we do have this printed gearbox. Now, this was printed in PLA, so keeping it stored with the spring intention will not work out well. You have to store it while it's open, which I made the mistake of storing it closed, so it doesn't have full power to open as it did before. You just have to press down a little hard on the button and it opens up. But it turned out really well. There was no supports needed, nothing like that. Uh, it was printed in this orientation. So everything turned out really well. You do see some layer lines. I believe it's because the filament that I'm using is their filament. And it is a bit moist from what I could tell. But other than that, it turned out really well. I am really happy with the quality I'm getting from this printer. So our next model right here is this articulated, I guess a little salamander thing. This printed out really well too. This was printed out in the white. Now there was no breaking of the joints needed because it all just came apart pretty easily. 
as you guys see I've taken a closer look if the camera will focus you guys will see the layer lines actually really clean on this and you do have the little head everything was moving really well so lastly we do have this giant rocket I printed this took 48 hours for all the parts to print now right up here it is all put together so it is like a little storage container and everything is able to basically disassemble including these fins by this little screw right here and just pop them all off now this did print really well too so we do have some imperfections on this piece we do have the C seam right here and some retraction points just because it was all printed together we do have some stringy on the inside but nothing that isn't easily cleaned off and there also was no imperfections with the screwing part everything fit together there was no tuning needed everything just fits together so I did almost forget to show you guys my favorite model I printed right here now this is a tire and wheel set this is printed just like this on the print bed now in the right extruder I did have TPU and in the left one I did have PLA and that's how we got this TPU tire and the inside wheel is PLA now with the ability of the IDEX printer you can print two different materials with the outside being rubber just like I have on this one this is TPU 95A so it's not the softest it's actually pretty firm and the inside could be a PLA or ABS or something like that like we have here and if you are going to be printing some more high temp materials supports are going to get harder to remove so one also could be used for a dissolvable support material and the other one could be used for your high temp material so overall I think this is a really solid printer just because it was able to print all of these without tuning especially with these swords and the IDEX system now there are some pros and cons for this printer now some of the pros are that it is fully enclosed meaning you can print PETG and nylon and ABS without there being any wind drafts causing some warping that can mess up your print another pro is that it is USB and Wi-Fi compatible so you could send files through Wi-Fi or update the printer like that some other pros would be the build volume of 300 by 250 by 200 this is just a pretty good build volume we also do have the high temp hot ends that could go up to 320 degrees celsius and the 150 millimeter printing speed is pretty good now for the cons the cons will be reflecting the price of the printer when it first came out it costed $3,500 so when you're spending that much on a printer, you're expecting a little bit more. So for the first con, there's no heated chamber in this printer, which is a big disappointment when you want to print those higher temp nylons like HTN. Now the nozzle could handle it, the build plate could handle it, but since there's no heated chamber, you might get some warping, you might get some layer separation, so it's just not a good idea to print that material, which is a big disappointment when paying $3,500. The next con would be the extruder that the printer comes with. Now both of them do have the standard Optimus P1 extruder. Now if you guys don't know what that is, it was basically the extruder that comes on the Ender 3s, the standard red kind, but they're just a little bit different. Now the reason why this is probably my biggest con for this printer is because you cannot adjust the tension, so you're not able to print anything like TPU or TPE which is a really big disappointment because with the IDEX printer you could do TPU and then the supports could be PLA or something else and just because you cannot adjust tension that's why I feel like this might be my biggest con for this printer so my last con for this printer would have to be the build plate just because it does have a plastic layer on top and not PP or PEI means you have to use glue stick because you cannot get anything to stick to just the plastic which is a disappointment again when it first came out paying $3,500 you would expect something like PP or PEI so after listing all the pros and cons I would not recommend this printer if it costed $3,500 especially today since companies are offering high speeds with heated chambers at only $1,000 but this printer today costs $2,500 so I think it is a pretty solid option compared to the other printers on the market today Again, this is an IDEX printer, so it's basically two printers and one you can print duplicate mode or mirror mode. So overall, I would recommend this printer. 
it's a really solid option compared to the other printers on the market today. Thank you for staying to the end. If you guys did enjoy this video, please like, comment, and subscribe. It really does help me out. And I'll be doing more videos on this printer. I'll be doing a DIY extruder and a heated chamber. So if you guys want to watch that, stay tuned. Have a wonderful day. Peace.